Hi everybody, Dave the Pharmacist here again for part four. Um, to this session we're going to talk about uh, your little nitroglycerin spray that you may or may not have got. Some people got a nitroglycerin spray, some people might have got a nitroglycerin patch. And um, <clears throat> you know, for those of you that got the spray, uh, I, a lot of people that come to our class they sort of get the spray, but they're not sure how often they should use it or whether they need to use it or, you know, so we're going to talk about that in this session. We're also because uh, we're also going to talk about the use of the spray for chest pain, but we're just going to talk about the idea of chest pain or heart attack pain and all the other pains and shooting pains and weird feelings that you're probably feeling right now since you've been out of the hospital. This is a really difficult time for a lot of people um, and, and uh, hopefully you can relate to this. The, it, it, uh, it is very normal for when you get out of the hospital after a heart attack to come home and you know you come home you've had your you've got a stents put in your vessels are supposed to be opened up and yet you know between your neck and your belt buckle you probably are feeling a lot of pain. Some of them are shooting, stabbing pains. Some of them are, um, you know, just, just odd feelings that you're not sure. And it's hard to figure out whether these pains are heart attack pains. Is this the next heart attack? And, and uh, for some people, it just freezes them. And frankly, it's exhausting. It's exhausting to go through that every day, trying to figure out if any kind of, if the pain you're feeling has anything to do with your heart attack. I would tell you that, um, in my opinion, from you know the people that we've talked to in cardiac rehab over the years, in my opinion, again, you should clear this with your doctor, but I think the, the majority of pains, especially those real sharp shooting pains that you feel, you might be feeling right now uh, in your chest area, your shoulders, and um, th those are often have nothing to do with your heart attack pain and so one of the things I think it's it is is up to you and the challenge you have is trying to figure out what's going on figuring out what pain actually could mean a heart attack and and um, meaning you, you should go into the emergency room and which pain is you know something that's probably not related so I'm going to try to give you just a couple of general ideas and um, you know, see what you think. Run them by your your doc, and uh, just to see if they agree before you you sign on. Um, I, I I have a couple of rules. Um, first, my first rule, I think most heart attack pain. So if you're going to have another heart attack, I, I I really think most heart attack pain is really quite dull and boring pain. And it's extended pain. It's pain that doesn't go away. Dull, aching. A lot of the pains that people get when they get out of the hospital are these real sharp shooting pains that last for a very short time and then they're gone. So um, just to help you, um, if you're feeling a lot of those sharp shooting pains right now, and I think a lot of people get them, part of them are muscle cramps. I think part of them also could be just nerve pain premature nerve firings. I kind of have this personal belief that when you go into the hospital and they stick a stent in you and you get radiation from your imaging and all that sort of stuff, I think there's some, I think there's some excitable, hyper excited nerves um, um, in your body right now that are probably firing a little bit prematurely. So I really think for those of you that are struggling with those, those really sharp firing pains that are coming and going and you're not sure it's kind of freezing you and it's exhausting you. Really, I think the rule here that you can live by to help you get through this part of your journey in, in recovery is to, to just say, um, anytime you get some kind of a pain, stop and relax. Relaxing is big. Sit down. If you think it's a, it seems like it's heart attack pain, then take out your nitro spray if you have it. Take a spray. If you don't have your nitro spray, just sit down. It's okay. Sit down and relax for five minutes. If that pain is gone, 
before five minutes, then it's not typically anything to do with your heart muscle cells that have that uh, if, if it was a heart attack, those heart muscle cells would be suffocating without oxygen, without blood. And so um, that heart attack pain would continue. It would it would be usually dull or boring or whatever it is. It would continue for a long time. If you have if that pain is gone before five minutes, don't feel anxious and don't carry that with you the rest of the day. Your heart muscle cells can hold their breath for longer than five minutes. So um, um, that, that might be one rule of thumb, the five minute rule that could probably help you get rid of the, the mental anguish associated with all the pains that you're having. All those pains that are lasting less than five minutes, especially those real sharp ones, probably they're not related to your heart muscle cells and you should give yourself a break and not worry about it. So um, that's number one. The second thing, um, if you had um, nitroglycerin given to you, um, you may never need to use it and that's okay. So some people are not sure if they're supposed to use it or not supposed to use it. You don't have to use it. And in fact, in this day and age, if you had uh, stents put in or you had bypass surgery, we expect that you won't need your nitro. You just carry it in your pocket. And that nitro is simply used for those times when you're not sure if your heart, what your heart pain might be from. Spray that nitro, sit down for five minutes, and it will help it go away faster. Um, if, it, if there is uh, um, sort of a little bit of reduced blood flow to your heart, uh, to those sort of say 3,000 muscle cells that we talked about in part two, um, if if there's sort of a reduced uh, a, a bit of blood flow that's only short term, less than five minutes, uh, that nitro will help it go away faster. The um, um, for, for those of you that don't have nitro or you're not sure about using it, don't worry. Nitro doesn't save you from having a heart attack. That little nitro spray, it's just to help ease any kind of symptoms of, of pain that you, you might get, and frankly, a lot of you don't. So um, let's talk about nitro for a second, and uh, I'll just tell you how it works. Sorry about that little technical glitch there. You probably saw me fumbling trying to find my pause button while I moved this to the picture. So... Uh, here, guys, this is a picture you've seen before, and hopefully you're following these sessions uh, in order. Um, if you have, then you've sort of seen this picture. This is our picture of a blood vessel that we showed you earlier. Here's our little layer of endothelial cells, which we've talked about already. Um, and on the outside of, of all of these arteries is a layer of muscle. And, um, and uh, this muscle if it contracts, so if it squeezes tight, it can squeeze this blood vessel smaller or make it constricted. If that, if this muscle layer relaxes, it can open up and dilate to allow uh, a greater area of, uh, and more blood to flow through. So, um, this is, uh, um, I, I draw you this picture because this is sort of the place where nitroglycerin works is on blood vessels. And um, um, interestingly enough, the nitroglycerin that comes in that spray, I'll call nitroglycerin NTG. This nitroglycerin, when you spray it into your mouth, it actually doesn't do anything uh, in this form, nitroglycerin. But what happens is when you put it into your body, your body very quickly changes this nitroglycerin into a compound called nitric oxide. Now, if you Google, um, if you Google nitric oxide or uh, on the internet or um, in textbooks, you'll also see it. You'll also see it. The short form for nitric oxide as NO. Nitric oxide is considered uh, what is called a vasodilator. It opens up vessels. And this nitric oxide is a, is a chemical that is actually produced naturally by your 
endothelial cells. So the way it kind of works is um, these endothelial cells, when they're feeling stressed or pressure, if there's a lot of pressure inside the blood vessel, and we've already talked about blood pressure, um, they will uh, they will create or produce this chemical called nitric oxide. And what they do is when they produce this chemical, they just push it back to their next door neighbor, the muscle cells. And so as this nitric oxide is made and pushed to the muscle cells, the nitric oxide gets into the muscle and it causes that muscle to relax meaning that this vessel can potentially then dilate or open up a bit and open the, the area for amount of blood to come through. So the, um, this nitric oxide is a chemical, like I said, that is made by your endothelial cells. And so this is done naturally. But interestingly, I don't know who discovered this, but um, if you take nitroglycerin into your body, your body converts this nitroglycerin also to nitric oxide. And so this is actually how, nitric, how nitroglycerin works to sort of relieve chest pain. Um, and there's a little bit more to this story, but this is sort of this, the simple idea. Uh, nitroglycerin, it doesn't do anything to your body on its own, but it's converted very quickly to this nitric oxide. And that nitric oxide uh, can get into muscle cells around blood vessel walls. Uh, they relax, and then this whole thing, uh, if they relax, can open up. So that's the nitroglycerin story. Um, again, you know, uh, don't worry. Use your nitro if you you don't have to be certain that your heart pain is from um, a heart attack or if it's from indigestion. You can use it. Um, it's pretty safe to use. Uh, you'll probably get a rip and headache after you use it. But um, other than that, it won't cause you, it shouldn't cause you uh, any trouble. Um, and you, you don't have to feel anxiety about whether I should use it or whether I shouldn't use it. I'll tell you, our goal is that you don't need to use it. So the one thing that I think your doctor will wanna know is if you are using it every day or more than every day, then um, make sure, make an appointment with your doc and tell the doc how much you're using it. And then I think then that's important for your doc to, to, to uh, you know, investigate further and see, what, what, you know, why, what, why are you needing it so much? Uh, our goal is that you never need it. And, um, uh, but in the meantime, use it if you need it. If you use it, and if that pain lasts for more than five minutes, so before we were talking about pain that lasted less than five minutes, it's usually just transient, it goes away, and you don't have to worry about damage, you don't have to worry about the anxiety that you get when you're sort of feeling chest pain, and especially at this time after you just got out of the hospital. This is a very difficult time. So um, if it lasts less than five minutes, don't worry. Just make sure to tell your doctor how much you're using it, how much pain you're getting. Um, um, and if you're finding you're getting it every day, make sure you, you get in and get that checked. If that single episode, if, if you do have an episode of pain that lasts more than five minutes, so let's say you've had pain, it's not going away, you sit, you spray your nitro. Um, if it lasts more, if it hasn't gone away in five minutes or if it's getting worse, um, you're still not sure, um, you know, the best thing you can do is go to the emergency department. Even if it's heartburn or if it's something else, don't be embarrassed about going to the emergency department. Um, in, in many hospitals, in many regions, especially around here in Saskatchewan, um, the system is set up to make sure that emergency rooms can investigate people who, um, uh, you know, are thinking they might have chest pain, investigate them quickly, because as we said before in our previous sections, the best thing you can do if you are having another heart attack is to get to the emergency room as quick as possible. And then if, 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 if we can open up that blockage, if there is a blockage there that is completely blocked, if that can be opened up quickly, you, you can prevent those 3,000 heart muscle cells from getting you know, significant damage. 
And if you can do that, then you can walk out of that hospital, um, you know, in pretty good shape. And so that's our goal is to make sure that you're really, really careful. Um, again, you know, it's a, it's a difficult situation, but again, you know, for most of you, we don't want you to feel chest pain. You know, you go to your doc, get checked out, see how good your blood flow is on your last angiogram. If it's open, then really this shouldn't be an issue. So this should just be, keep this in the back of your head, try to deal with those short fleeting pains, try not to get too exhausted because of them. And I know this is an exhausting time in this first few months after you get home. We're actually going to have another session on just the fatigue that people experience after they get home from the hospital. I think that'll be since part four or five. So just uh, take a look down the road and I'll record something about that at the end after we're done with our drugs. So um, so I, I hope that helps about the nitroglycerin. Um, the last thing I want to say is, again, nitroglycerin is a pretty safe drug. There's one really uh, pretty notable drug interaction that we should all be aware of, especially the men out there should be very aware of, is that this nitroglycerin spray can interact with another kind of drug that men use sometimes, um, the erectile dysfunction drugs, you know, the Viagras, the Cialis, the, 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 all of those drugs you see at NFL football day, the commercials. So um, there's a ton of men using these drugs and, the, and, and, and those are good drugs. So, so this isn't about being bad drugs, but the one thing that's unique about nitroglycerin and those, um, those erectile dysfunction drugs is if they're in your body at the same time, they can actually drop your blood pressure so low that you can fall um, and actually have to be hospitalized to try to get your blood pressure back up. So there's, there's uh, cases in the literature, and again, this isn't that common, but the, the common denominator for trouble with those kind of drugs is having nitroglycerin in your body at the same time that you have like a Cialis or a Viagra or you know, any of those erectile dysfunction drugs. So um, um, for those of you guys that use those drugs, just be sure that if you're ever gonna swallow one of those pills, make sure you haven't taken your nitro. Um, and, and, and there's, for you know, check with your pharmacy, there's a number of days where you know that, this, that it's washed out. Uh, can be up to two days sometimes if you take a, uh, one of those drugs and then you should probably wait two days before your next nitro. Get, get all those details from your pharmacy and your doc or your nurse or whoever, get those details from them. I'm the big picture guy. Uh, but again, the basic idea is you just don't want those drugs in your body at the same time. Um, other than that, really, there's um, um, I think we've covered most of the most of the things that I want to tell you about the nitro. So um, if we look back on all our parts now, we have covered mm, almost all the drugs that are recommended to people after heart attack. We've done the antiplatelets, we've done blood pressure, and now we've done the nitro spray. Now there's only one drug left that's recommended to people after a heart attack, and that's the cholesterol pills. That's our next session. And so uh, I may do it tomorrow because I'm losing my voice and uh, I have to get uh, some other work that I got to do. But uh, uh, I'll post that.